We move the decimal left. More specific. Two places, okay? 1.50% is equal to, we move that decimal two places, so that's 0 0.015. Technically, you don't have to have the zero in, on the end, but I'm going to put it there anyways, okay? So, then what do we do with that number? If we're trying to figure, we start with 214, we want to know how much money we have after one year. If we earn 1.5% every year, what do we do with that now? Multiply. Multiply, okay. So 214 times 0 0.0150 is, what is it? 3.21, okay. Talking about money, so we'll stop right there. Um, we have $3.21 at the end of the first year. We add it back to the original. Okay, We add it back to what we started with. $3.21, $3.21 is how much interest we earned. So then we have to go back and add that to what we started with. So after one year, we're going to have $217.21. I know, right? I earned three dollars and twenty-one cents. Didn't have to do a thing. Okay, um, interest rates really aren't that great, especially when you're starting with two hundred fourteen dollars. May sound like a lot, but in terms of an investment, it's really not that much. Okay, so um, go ahead and calculate it for two years and three years. Okay, okay. So you should have gotten after two years that you have $220.47. After three years, you have $223.78. Now, part D there says, what is happening to the amount of money you have from one year to the next? So just in one word, what's happening? It's increasing. Is it increasing by the same amount? No. No. It's not. It's close. It's similar. It looks like every time it's $3 and something. The first time it was $3.21. Uh, the second time, let's see how much it increases by. $3.26. And then $3.31. Okay. So it's increasing progressively, actually, by five more cents every year. Um, but we could keep go doing this, and every time it's going to increase by a little bit more. Okay, It's increasing, I'm going to say it this way, increasing at an increasing rate. It's not a constant rate. If it were increasing at a constant rate, then it would be a linear function. Okay. If every time we a year passed, it increased by the same amount, that's a linear function. But this time, every time a year passes, the amount it increases by is a little bit more than the year before. Okay? Increasing at an increasing rate is exponential growth. Increasing at an increasing rate is exponential growth. Now, in the last model we did with the pennies, that wasn't exponential growth. What, what was that? It wasn't growth. What's the opposite of growth? Decreasing, or the word we use is decay. You're not growing theoretically, you're decaying. That's a great way of thinking about aging, right? After you get to a certain point, you stop growing, you start decaying. Um, anyways, so exponential decay, what was happening there? We were decreasing, but what happened to the rate at which we were decreasing? Let's look back at, uh, let's look back at those numbers for a second. Okay, That first time, we went from 100 to 48. That's a difference of 52. The second time, for my data, I went from 48 to 23. That was only a difference of 25. So what's happening to my rate of decrease there? It's getting smaller. So I'm decreasing at a decreasing rate. So that, that's, uh, that's decay. Okay, that's exponential decay. 
if you decrease at a decreasing rate. Anyways, didn't have any, well, related to this, but I was trying to connect the two that we've done today. Okay, um, so we've done the first three entries right here. I want you to keep going, okay? It says go all the way to year 14. And then we need to see if we can come up with a model right here. So fill in the table. You've got the first three. Keep going to year 14. And then so M of T is function notation for money after T years. This is our initial value. Once again, just like it was in the other example we were doing. This right here is 1 plus our rate as a decimal. And T is the number of years. Okay, so this we can use this model. You could do this. So, you know, say that uh, I just wanted to know how much money we had after 10 years, but I didn't want to have to calculate it. That took some time, didn't it, to type all those in and figure out the numbers, and you had to know the, the one before it to figure it out. But once you have this model... All you have to do is plug in 10, and it gives you the answer right there, 248 and 36 cents. Okay? So once you have the model, then you don't have to build the table the way that we built the table. Okay? You still can, you just don't have to. So if we want to an answer question E, we don't want to have to do that by hand. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to do that whole process that I just had to do there a hundred times to find out how much money there is after 100 years. But now that I have the model, M of 100, all I have to do is plug in 100 for my exponent. So I need everyone to do that right now. Grab your calculator and type that in. 214, parentheses, 1.015, close parentheses, caret 100. And tell me how much money we have after 100 years. $948.50. Wow, that's not a whole lot to show for 100 years. What did you get? Is there a problem? Gave you zero? Did you have 1.015? Everybody else get 948.5? I'm getting some looks like, no, I didn't, but I don't want to say anything because I don't want to draw attention to myself. Mine says 46 cents. Okay, I mean, four cents. Anyways, um... So 100 years, and that's all we end up with? Doesn't seem like a whole lot. Okay. Um, really quickly, I'm going to introduce the idea of this last problem, and then that will be the end of our day here. Uh, this second problem says, using your formula and your calculator, about how many years do you have to wait until you have $1,000 in the bank? So are we plugging $1,000 into the model? No, because 1,000 isn't talking about the years. 1,000 is talking about how much money we have. So where's the 1,000 going? Yeah. On the end. It's going on the other side of the equation. Okay, We still started with $214. We're still earning 1.5% interest. The question is, how many years will we have $1,000? So, how did we approach solving these? Okay. Huh? Inverse? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, we would use the inverse, but that's not what we did. What did we do when we had these equations? What did we do to solve exponential equations? We did it yesterday and we did it on Friday. What did we do? Well, it is equal, huh? Yeah, we want to get it by itself, so what would we do first? 
divide by 214. Then what did we try and do? Madam your attention please, we need all interact members to meet in the front lobby directly after the bell. Thank you. 4.6728, then what do we do? What did we want to do? We want to take the exponent away. We wanted to write it so it had the same base. Well, do we know how to change things when they have decimal bases? No. So what did we do when we couldn't write it so that it had the same base? We plugged it into what? Y equals. We graphed it. We graphed it. That's what we did yesterday. And we did on Friday. 